I'm Rick Howard, president of Kingdom Magic Vacations. In my job, I get to travel a lot. I explore the world on land and sea, eating in unique restaurants, and discovering interesting locations. I'm always looking for new places to visit, and I want you to travel with me. Welcome to Travel with Rick. Well, hey guys, welcome to this week's show. It's going to be epic. All right. We're here, as you can see, at Cajun Encounters Tours. We're getting ready to go out for a little swamp tour. We're just outside of New Orleans, so we're gonna be going out to the Louisiana swamps. I don't know what to expect. I'm sure there's gonna be gators, but you know, you never know out there in the swamp. So hopefully, we're gonna take you, and we're all gonna come back. That's what we wanna do. So we're gonna go out and see what we can find in the swamp, what we can find out about in the swamp, and then hopefully we're we'll going to get back to New Orleans and we're going to do some more stuff around there. So let's go see what these swamps are all about and Cajun Encounters. Come on. Alright, well first of all, I want to welcome you all to Cajun Encounters. I'm going to be your guide and your captain today. My name is Captain Troy. So if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to ask, okay? There's no dumb questions on this boat. <laughs> we talk about everything on my boat. Now, we do have a couple rules on the boat. Uh, no smoking and no standing. Smoking is obvious. We have gas on the boat. Now, standing, that's just a problem with the boss and his insurance company. Can't have anybody standing up because we don't want anybody to fall out the boat because there's a lot of logs, there's a lot of sandbars on this river. And if we hit one, I don't want to lose anybody because I'm responsible for you as long as you're on my boat. Once you get off, I'm not responsible anymore. <laughs> so if you fall off, I'm taking off, all right? It's kind of hard for you to fall off if you're sitting down, right? Now these railings on this boat, they're here for your protection from the animals and from the trees because when we get into the swamp, this boat's barely gonna fit, okay? And our animals come up right next to the side of the boat. And your little fingers and toes look just like my hot dogs. Okay? So I don't want y'all to lose anything. Now, can everybody swim? Yes. No. Cool. All right, well, if not, there's life jackets under all the seats. And I'm sure if this boat starts taking on water, I can get this boat to land before it sinks because this is about as wide as this river gets. And you can stand up most places in this river. It's not that deep, okay? And there's a couple fire extinguishers back here in case we have a fire, but if we do, I'm getting off the boat. All right, so you're on your own. Now there's no theory they tell you when you see alligators or crocodiles in the wild, you want to measure from the base of their eyes to the tip of their nose. Whatever you see there in inches, just kind of relate that to feet. That usually tell you how old that animal is or how long it is. So the alligators and crocodiles grow about a foot a year for the first six years of their life. Then they slow down their growth rate, okay? More in females than males. Female alligators only get around eight feet. That is large for an alligator, period. But your male alligators, they will grow their whole life, okay? And they can live for up to 100 years. All your cold-blooded animals grow their whole life. Alligators, crocodiles, snakes, fish, turtles, birds. I mean, not birds, snakes, okay? And every mile and a half that you go on the river, in the swamp, in the marsh, by you. There's going to be one dominant male alligator in that territory. He is not going to allow any other mature male alligators in his area. He's going to have anywhere from 10 to 30 females in that one area that he mates with every year. Okay? You see him coming out of the lilies over here? Now this little alligator right here, I say he's got about Four inches right there, he's about four feet. He's about four years old. And everything this little alligator needs to hunt is above the water right now. His eyes, his nose, and his ears. They can hear, see, and smell very well. Now, when he gets a little bit closer, you can see all the little ridges along this alligator's back. That's what's called scoops. Each one of those scoops has a fat cell underneath it. All their blood vessels run around each one of those scoops. 
That's how they regulate their body temperature. That's their solar panel. Okay? That's why you see alligators and crocodiles sitting out on logs. They're just trying to warm their body temperatures up. Because alligators have to keep their body temperature right at 75 degrees. If their body temperature gets below that, okay, food can sit in their stomachs and rot. They can kill them. They get a type of food. Oh, sit down. Seven, eight hundred pounds out here. You can hold those hot dogs this high out of the water and you can get them. <laughs> We have about 12 of them out here that we see that's over 12 feet, okay? Uh, Big Al, Cindy, and Brutus, that's our three token alligators. Al's probably... Of course, it's a pecking order. The bigger alligator is going to eat first, okay? <laughs> because alligators do eat other alligators. And I've seen it happen before about five or six times on tour. <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah. Well, something's going to happen to all the uh, mature males. Uh, he, he'll run them out or he'll eat them. You're right. Yeah. That alligator eat that alligator. So what other fire are they going to go into? They're, they're going to have to find their own territory. Yeah. There's a lot of areas. As long as they stay away from the big male, especially during mating season. It's mating season right now. That's why you're not really seeing a lot of our big, big alligators. Okay? They're in their mating ponds. Then they'll come out and start to feed a lot more. Look at that. And you see how much lighter in color this alligator is over here? That's how you can get really, they're all distinctive, just like people. See how he's chasing them off? Look. <laughs> alligators have a more of a rounded snout. Crocodiles have a more pointed snout, okay? Um, when, a, when a crocodile closes his mouth, you can see his top and his bottom teeth. When an alligator closes his mouth, you cannot see his bottom teeth. Crocodiles are more of an olive green color, more like this alligator over here, okay? Most of the alligators would be a dark brown, black, gray, or even a lighter green color like that one back over here. And crocodiles are way more aggressive than alligators, okay? Crocodiles have been known to stalk people. Alligators like bite-sized stuff, fish, frogs, turtles, snakes, and other alligators. Crocodiles eat zebras and people and wildebeest, okay? That's why they get a lot larger. Now, we don't have any crocodiles here because crocodiles... They live closer to the equator, okay? Because if a crocodile's metabolism gets below a certain point, they'll actually die, okay? Alligators go into a hibernation, okay? And crocodiles can tolerate a little more salt water than alligators can. But there's 17 different crocodiles. There's only two alligators, and there's seven caimans and two gharials. The only other alligator besides the American alligator that you see in out here today is a Chinese alligator. Chinese alligator doesn't get as large as your American alligator. They only get about five or six feet like most of your caimans. The largest of your caiman family is the black caiman, okay? They'll get about 10 or 12 feet. Now your saltwater crocs and your Nile crocs, those are the big guys, okay? Crocodiles have been known to get over 30 feet, and that's six feet longer than this boat that we're on, okay? Leave that alligator alone. Big bully. He's probably a, a male, but this is when he tries bullying everybody else. When Scarface comes out, it'll be a different story.
cypress trees, uh, tupelo gum trees, maple trees, white oaks, and a couple willow trees, and bay trees, okay? Ball cypress tree is our state tree. That's the ones you see with the, most of the branches are to the top, with the real uh, small leaves, kind of look like ferns. I'm gonna show them to you a little bit better when we get into the swamp, okay? But that's our state tree. I don't know if anybody watches Axemen or swamp loggers, but that's what they're looking for, cypress wood, okay? Cypress wood is very sought after because it's impervious to rot. Termites can't penetrate their cypress wood. You can take a cypress tree, cut it down, stick it under water for 300 years. Somebody will pick that tree up, that wood's still gonna be very useful. It's probably gonna be worth 500 times what it's worth when it's standing. Okay. Not to leave them, cut them down, but if they fall down, they're in the river, you can pick them up. A lot of people come out here just to harvest cypress wood. A lot of that stuff that you've been visiting while you're here, or you're going to visit, all the plantations, all those bars on Bourbon Street, all those homes on St. Charles Street, all the churches, the smaller restaurants, hotels, they might be brick or stucco on the outside, but in the inside, that's all cypress wood. That's most of them. Now this feed is full of corn right here. Well, we haven't filled it because we have to get a whole pallet of corn, but that feeder goes off about every two hours, and you get squirrels, raccoons, deer, pigs, you get all types of animals come up to this feeder. I brought my personal corn. These little pigs are only about three months old, okay? They'll get five, six, seven hundred pounds out here. And they're a nuisance animal. You can hunt them pretty much in every state. The raccoons over there? Yeah. The raccoons are not. don't come out of big too much. Where is he at? The raccoons? No, the raccoons. I'll see you. Now, a lot of people think raccoons are rodents. They're not rodents. They're closely related to the red panda. They're in the bear family. Okay? And they're born with rabies. It's genetic. It just doesn't affect them like it does. Yeah. Yeah, he's cute till he grabs the whole of it. Oh, seriously? Come on. Raccoons use their hands probably more than we do. Come on. A lot of animals will pick up stuff with their mouth. Raccoons always use their hands. He's like playing with it. Now that boat sucks away from the bay. Come on. Come on. Lily. Come on. 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 Elephant ears grow anywhere here in the south, wherever there's water. I had a lady on my boat the other day from California. She told me she pays anywhere from $40 to $60 for one of these spuds that makes about four or five of those elephant ears. I said, you got to be kidding. Those things grow in my backyard. You cut them down one week with the weed eater, they're back up almost the same size. You can't get rid of them. You can dig them up and they grow back. Now the tree that's stretched across the front of us, okay, this is a white oak. A lot of people think these are maple trees, but they're white oaks, okay? And the reason this tree's leaning like that is not because of a hurricane. It's just that all these other trees is blocking the sunlight. So it's growing towards this opening, just like all the other trees you're going to see. There's a lot of owls out here during the daytime through this area. A lot of people think owls are nocturnal too. They're not. They move around all throughout the day. They just get more vocal at night. So everything gets vocal out here. It's like about 6 o'clock that sun starts to go down, it's like somebody flicks a light switch. All the day animals go in and all the night animals come out. You hear all the crickets and locusts and frogs and you see snakes. But snakes really don't like the heat of the day. Okay, they're, they're more of a, a cooler animal. They like the spring and the fall. And then they like early morning and then the nighttime. Then we get a lot of fireflies out here. Lightning bugs. I don't know if too many people get them in the city anymore. But we don't get them in the city. But we get them out here in the swamp. They're everywhere. Thank you. 
This is where most of your little alligators going to spend about the first two or three years of their life hiding from all these other animals. Because alligators are at the bottom of the food chain, okay? Everything eats them. Because when they're first born, they're only about four to six inches in length. It's not until they get about three or four feet until they become the apex predator in this area. And still, they have to worry about humans and other alligators. Uh, You're going to see how the water is going to try to clear up back here. It's just that it's pretty shallow. But we stir this stuff up pretty good. With the boats. But swamps are known as black swamps. They put a uh, black tint to the water. The cypress trees and the cypress knees. It gets a little deeper over here around this bend too. You'll see it clear up. Captain Roy! Especially if you look back over here, you can see the bottom over here. Your wife's back here. What's going on? Yeah, be the first boat to come in here in the morning. Yeah, you can see all the way to the bottom. You see catfish, and bass, and turtles, and alligators. I'm right underneath the boat. Wow, what is the color of the yeah. This tree. There's been weddings performed underneath this tree. It's been on our test books here in Louisiana. Okay, biologists have told us this tree is anywhere from 800 to 1,000 years old. It is completely hollow. It's not going to get any larger. It's not going to die anytime soon. They used to have a map to tell you how to get to this tree, but they did away with the map because people were coming out here and carving their names into the tree. But you can look to the top and you can see it still has all its leaves. Anybody seen Princess and the Frog, the Disney movie? You're going to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> well, this is the wishing tree in Princess and the Frog, okay? Disney World knows this swamp very well. This is where they get all their drawings for their little swamp cartoons. But this was one of Louisiana's first nature conservancies right here. When you go off the road to Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, you look at their swamps, their swamps look different from our swamps. We have more cypress swamps, more wooded swamps. Now over here to the right, you can see where the cypress trees end. That's all high ground out there, okay? That's why you don't see too many cypress trees. And that's what it looks like if you go to the Everglades. Every now and then you'll get a patch of canopy of trees in the Everglades, but it's more grass, okay? Now, that's where most of our female alligators go when she hibernates. That's where she goes to build her nest, okay? Because you don't really get too much water out there. Now, a female alligator anywhere from 6 to 12 feet, she can weigh anywhere from 100 to 1,000 pounds. She can have anywhere from 30 to 60 eggs in a clutch. At that size, she can't lay on those eggs. She'll crush them. So what she does, she takes all the vegetation you see over there, she'll pile it up about two or three feet. So just in case this water level rises in here, her eggs don't get washed away. Then she lays her eggs. She takes more vegetation and mud and she piles it up all on top of that. As that vegetation rots in the summertime, that's what incubates her eggs. Now the temperature in that nest, it's real important for a baby alligator. That is going to determine the sex of that baby alligator. If the temperature in that nest is 86 degrees or above, she has all male alligators. Below that, she has all female alligators. And that's just nature's way of making your larger alligators your male alligators. They have to dominate their territory. And smaller female alligators will never have a problem finding the baby. Watch out for Mama Pig, she's gonna come jump on the side. And that one. Ah! Look at all that thing. Look at this thing. It's funny. Pig, three months 
three weeks and three days to have a litter. The next day, she can get pregnant again. Okay? That's why there's such a problem. And they eat everything. That's why they call them pigs. See how you can see the roots of all these trees? Okay? That's because they root underneath those trees looking for insects and grubs. Kind of look like mangroves, all right? But we don't have mangroves in here. This is just the root system of all the cypress trees. At Kingdom Magic Vacations, we believe that life should be measured out in memories. For over 17 years, Kingdom Magic Vacations has specialized in making vacation dreams come true for families visiting Disneyland, Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, and Adventures by Disney. Kingdom Magic Vacations has been honored as an authorized Disney vacation planner, and that means we are recognized by Disney as a leader in planning magical vacations to Disney destinations. Our knowledge and experience allows our travel professionals to custom tailor your Disney vacation and make them truly magical. We know that each moment you spend on vacation creates a memory that lasts a lifetime. You can start planning your magical Disney vacation by visiting kingdommagic.com today. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching this week's show. We're here at City Walk, the Universal Orlando Resort. It's incredible here. Get ready to go check out some great food over at Bubba Gump. But we wanted to remind you real quick, drop your email, yeah, drop your email address up there in the box. That way you'll be signed up for our feed and you'll never miss a thing here on Travel with Rick. Every time we post something new, you'll be the first to know about it. If you really want to know what's going on and what we're doing, check us out over at Facebook. Facebook.com slash Travel with Rick. That's where we post our questions of the week that's where we'll tell you where we've been where we're going what's going on and you can interact with lots of other travel with work friends over there also and if you're on itunes or on youtube yeah we've got channels set up for you over there as well so if you like those check us out over there all right you never know where we're going to be next week so don't miss an episode come right back here check us out for another great episode of travel with friends so long everybody